We are in a series on um, King David, but today I uh, took a little pause because I wanted to uh, share about our worry, how to deal with that, how to handle that. Do you remember what you worry about when you were young? When you were young, what, what, what was your worry? What was your anxiety? One time I tried to remember what did I worry about when I was in grade school. I worried about my grades. I worried about my homework. I worried about if I could not get into a good college all the time. And I worried if I would not be good, not be good enough in sports, especially, you know, uh, basketball. And unfortunately, in my junior high years, I was done growing, and I gave up. It, it, it's, a, it's a deep, deep heart in my heart. Um, and I think I worried if I might get in trouble. One time, I wrote my initials with a permanent ink pen on a brand new white colored couch in the living room that my parents really loved. And I got in trouble that I couldn't get out of because they were my initials. <laughs> and I was not really a smart kid, you know. <laughs> I was laying on the couch all day, every day to hide it, but my mom finally found it while I was at school. And when I was at Back home, she was mad at her son, and I couldn't get into the rest of my life at the age of nine. Now, I understand my dad and mom whenever I look at my three kids at home. You know, I have a van, Honda Odyssey, that's parked out there. It was my dream car. I bought it last year, right after the graduation from school, and I was so thrilled. My dream came true. This is mine? Oh, my God. And in a few days after I bought it, my son Harrison carved the angry bird on the car. <laughs> angry bird. I was shocked. Oh, what the heck? And he got in trouble that he couldn't get out of because it was angry bird he loved. And I look back on my ch childhood when I got in trouble. I can remember thinking how good it would be one day when I'm grown up that I just never have to worry. I thought that I will have nothing to do with worry anymore when I become an adult because I will be free from grace, teachers, parents that I had to worry about. And now I'm old enough to don't have to worry about them anymore. And so, now do you think I'm literally living a worry-free life? I don't think so. Instead of grace, sports, girls, teachers, parents, a lot of different kinds of worries fill my life. You know, I have three kids to have to worry about, and my wife has four kids to have to worry about, including me. And, oh, did I tell you? We're going we're to have a fourth boy in this November. It is boy again. The bad news is we're going to have three boys, and four boys including me at home. <laughs> All right, the truth is, it's definitely much worse than I expected. I think that life is always in the stupid cycle. Life is always hard. In today's passage, now Jesus was talking to a large group of people in the Sermon on the Mount, and he says, here's what I want to tell you. Just don't worry about your life. Don't worry about anything. Now, what the striking about it is, now you think about the crowd, the people that Jesus was talking to. Do you think the living conditions for them were easier or more difficult than the living conditions in our day? You need to understand this. 2,000 years ago, their living conditions were far more difficult than, a, than in our day. Most of them were incredibly poor in severe poverty. They lived in you know, less than a dollar a day, usually just one meal a day. They would be poor until they die. 95% of them would never be able to read or write. No proper education. They didn't have enough water to drink or wash. Many of them were lame or sick. They had no pharmacy. They had no medicines. From time to time, plagues come and kill up to a third of an entire city. A lot of them were slaves. More than 70% were slaves. They would never be free. No freedom. And you know what? Their life expectancy was the age of 30. Now you look around this room, how many of you in this room are under 30? There are a lot of people here over 30. There are some people older than 40. Some are older than 
49. <laughs> I'm 32. I'm quite young in this room, but I'm super old guy back in Jesus' day. Just 30 years life on earth. It was their word. The anxiety effect the anxiety factor must be pretty higher than our day. Now, over the last 2,000 years, living conditions have gotten much better. We are better educated, healthier, cleaner, freer, 20 times over than people were back then. We have enough food, enough water, enough resource, and freedom, at least in America. Look at your smartphone. Look at your computer. You could access to any kinds of information in just a few seconds. You could figure out what is happening on the other side of the world with your computer. Look at your vehicle. Look at the sky. By airplane, you could go wherever you want to go within 24 hours. That's why my mom and aunt could came to here to see his son. What a wonderful, awesome, marvelous, fantastic world that you are living in now. Nobody had ever imagined before. So, so, isn't it so great that we don't have to worry anymore? You're happy enough every day, every moment, aren't you? You're fully satisfied in this marvelous world, don't you? There's a study done recently by a Harvard guy about over the last 40 years, a diagnosis of depression and anxiety is 10 times more common today than it was just 40 years ago. Even though by every object, objective measure, the living condition, wealth, health, food, education, technology, those are all getting better, but our concerns, depressions, anxieties are getting worse and worse. It's strange. It's weird. It must be better, but it's not. We still think more money, more health, more improvement will free us from worry and will lead us to a worry-free life. But now Jesus says, you will never get to the worry-free life by the improved, better circumstances, more wealth, more health. But the only way, he says, is learning how to put your life in the hands of the Father. Just let it go. Let go of your life like the birds. Here Jesus explains with the life of an animal, animal and nature around him, actually birds and, what was that, the flowers, to help our understanding. And I think it's kind of a perfect example. Uh, so uh, let me show you a short video clip. Uh, as, uh, it's, it's an old commercial about squirrels on the street. I, 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 have shown, I have shown you before. It's one of my favorite, and you will watch God's amazing grace on their lives. Take a look. Get it? Right after the survival, he started eating. <laughs> great peace and great comfort. So, Jesus said on the Bible, take a look at the birds in the air. In this contemporary version, take a look at the squirrels on the street. I'm sure Jesus was actually pointing out with his finger some birds flying around. Take a look at the next screen. Yes, look at the birds. They don't plant seeds, they don't harvest crops, they don't store food, yet your Heavenly Father feeds them. You know, now, there's nothing wrong with planting or harvesting or storing. There's nothing wrong with working. But they don't do that stuff and they still eat. How does that happen? Well, Jesus said it's God. Because God is so good. Not by accident. We can plant, we can give water, but we can't make it grow. Only God can make it grow. He said again, take a look next, next screen. Look, look at the flowers, lilies in the field. It's a wild flower that nobody plants or cares. They don't toil or spin. Nothing wrong with toiling or spinning, but they don't do it and they are still so 
beautiful, that the best dress made up human beings in the world are nothing to comparison. Why are they so beautiful? Well, where does that beauty come from? It's from God. And Jesus keeps saying, take a look at the next screen. If God takes care of the birds in the air and the flowers on the field that are here today and gone tomorrow, then will he not much take care of you, oh, you little faith? Here's the good news. Jesus says to you today, whatever your living conditions are, if you are let me in your life, I will come into you and I will be your Lord. I'll guide you, I'll lead you, and I'll feed you. One time Jesus was in a boat with his friends and a storm came and they were all in the great panic. They were all scared to death. Anybody remember what Jesus was doing at the time, at the moment? Taking a nap in the bottom of the boat. And they wake him up, hey Jesus, what are you doing? We are going to die. It's terrible. It's awful. They were jumping around there. And Jesus says, no, it'll be okay. He looks out at the storm, please be still. And he was. And the people look at each other, look at each other and, who is this man? Now the same Jesus says to us now, if you want to invite me into your life and make me your companion, make me your guide, make me your master and your Lord, then it'll be okay. This is real important. I'll tell you a modern-day example of this that will be more familiar with you, especially to me. There is an NBA basketball team in Chicago area, you know, named Bulls. That's my favorite. It makes me crazy, you know that? In 1990s, we had the best ever, greatest ever celebrated player. You all remember this name, Michael Jordan. Somebody said Jackson. No, Michael Jordan. <laughs> what was great about him, mostly was not just about his great scoring ability or his great performance in first, second, and third quarters in a game, but his real game always started in the fourth quarter. He could be NBA final game, just te 10 seconds to go, two points behind, life or death, win or lose, 25,000 people in the stadium were crazy. And the ball is in the hands of Michael Jordan. And his eyes are flaming on fire. And he look at everybody. Everybody calm down. Peace be still. Here's what I'm going to do. That will be okay. And people will think, well, if Michael Jordan thinks it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay. And then we know the game will be turning out the way he always wanted. And everyone watching the game in Chicago area says, yeah. It worked. It will be okay. And the others in the non-Chicago area say, we won't be okay. He killed us. You get this picture? If you're on the same board with Jesus, like people wearing boots jersey in the same team with Michael Jordan, you would be okay. But if you are out of the board of Jesus, you wouldn't be okay. Though you are two points behind in your life, all throughout the storms, all throughout the rains, brokenness, pains, or depression, or every kind of human loss. Whatever it is, it will turn out to be okay because once your ball is in the hands of Jesus, he will gonna make it. That is the good news of the gospel. So friends, in your daily lives, you do this one day at a time. You don't have to figure out the rest of your life just today, just one day at a time. When you wake up in the morning, you say, okay, Jesus, just for this one day, you lead, I'll follow. When you send your kids to school, oh, Lord, just, just for this one day, you lead my kid, and he will follow you. Whatever I have to do in my relationships, in my works, in my study, in my body, my health, my finances, my children, my ministry, Jesus, they are all in your hands. You lead, I'll follow. You are the captain of my life. But now this is real important. You need to notice about this. Jesus does not say, if you follow me, you will never have problems. Jesus didn't say that. 
you still have trouble. Look at verse 34. See, so do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow is very interesting. Tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. I was surprised. Jesus agreed. Jesus knew that the world is filled with so many worries, so many anxieties, and most of those are actually out of our control. Who imagined I got struck? Who imagined I broke my hip? It's out of our control. He knew tomorrow will for sure bring its own troubles. As long as you live in the human body in the sinful, broken world, day after day, you could have different kinds of worries. He knew that. Did Jesus have problems? Yes, he did. Jesus had big problems. He was challenged by temptations. He was challenged by people's greed and judgmentalism and pride. He was sick, sick and tired. He was betrayed by one of his disciples. He was denied by his beloved friends. You know that. He was always getting in trouble. He ended up accused unfairly and humiliated and killed on the cross. He had a big problem in this world as one of us. You know, here's my aunt now from Korea. Last night, we shared a little bit. Um, she has a big problem. Uh, she always be in trouble. She always, it's, it's very uh, hard to say her life. She, she doesn't listen to me now, if it's the English. <laughs> she had a daughter, passed away when, when she was 12 years old. And her son, athlete, taekwondo, you know. He got injured when he was freshman in, in college, and he's living the rest of her, his life a handicap, cannot move, paralyzed all the bodies. And he got married and has daughter, has uh, Edison, right? That's a mental ill, sharing that one, crying. Why me, oh God? Why it happened to me? We lost any words before her. My cousin is pastor, I'm a pastor. No words. Nothing to say to her. Did, did Jesus have big problems? Yes, he had. As one of us in this world. And he definitely said to his followers, if you come follow me, you got to take up your cross. It could be big or small. It could be heavy or light. But anyhow, you could have your own cross when you follow me. If you can follow me, you could have problems, I know. See, he actually said on the Gospel of John, take a look. If the world hates me, keep in mind, it hated me, hated me first. And next one, 1633, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You might have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but don't worry. You will have trouble, but don't worry. Take your heart. Why? I have overcome the world. This is why he says, not worry. I know your heart. I know your heart. But the reason you don't have to worry is not because you won't have problem, but it's because our Lord Jesus is the winner and the champion who has defeated, has power to control everything in this world. We are follower of him. We trust him. He gave us a new and eternal life and the hope on the cross. I know it's so hard for us to get our minds around this. I know. But it's true in the view of God. Here's what Jesus saying in the Sermon on the Mount. Don't worry. Don't worry because nothing that really matters is ultimately at risk. Nothing that really matters is ultimately at risk as long as you live in this world with me. I know how weird it sounds to you, but I really got this truth as my own when I became a father of my children. When my first son, my first son Harrison was uh, just one year old, we took him to a pool in a hotel. My wife was in the room. Harrison has never been in a, any kind of pool. 
I tried to get him in the water. He was terrified and screaming out, started crying out, I drowned, I drowned, I drowned. Of course he didn't say, it's just my translation. Oh, look at the picture. I get him into the water. He started crying, terrified. Next one. All right, like this. There's a reddish face. To his perspective, that was terrifying. And to my perspective, it's kind of funny, isn't it? So cute. I said to him, no, honey, you are okay. I have you the whole time. You're always safe in my arms. Because I know, I knew what he didn't know, that he has never been in danger, for his father had him the whole time. So let's not tell mommy about this. <laughs> See, friends, nothing is at risk when you're in the hands of the Father in heaven because he has us the whole time. Even that death itself. Now, our stress level is very high, our family, because we uh, sent off our uh, loved aunt and his spouse, his wife, 50 years wedding. Yeah, death is our greatest fear, human fear. But death itself, every kind of loss is simply nothing to worry about because you are always in the hands of the Father now and forever. You say, I drown, I drown, I'm dying. But the Father will say, I had you the whole time. You are safe in me. Jesus ever said, take a look at the screen. The one who believes and trusts in me, even though you die, will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Nothing is ultimately at risk. Do you believe this, my son, my daughter? Death itself is powerless before God because we know he is the source of life. Now I know what you are thinking. I know Jesus said not to worry. I shouldn't worry so much, but I can't stop worrying by trying not to worry. So with that idea, last, this is the last slide. Apostle Paul gives us a great idea. Take a look at the screen. Philippians, don't be anxious about anything. Apostle Paul said the same thing as Jesus, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Just cast your worries to God. And the peace of God which transcends all our understandings will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What else we could do? So the idea is when a worry comes into your mind, don't feel guilty about it. Don't beat yourself up. Just pray. Just cast that anxiety on God your Father. No matter what you worry about today, maybe a person you love, Maybe your finances, maybe your health, maybe your withering skin, aging. Maybe your downturn, health, body, spirit. Maybe your future, or maybe your brokenness and pain in the past. Maybe your loss. Maybe your coming loneliness. Just let's cast our worries on the Lord. That's the only way for us to have the worry-free life. No matter what circumstances we are in, cast your worry on God right now. He is our Savior. He already paid everything about our weakness, mistakes, and our brokenness on the cross being died. He is our shepherd. He feeds you always like the birds in the f on the air and the flowers in the field. And He is our Father. He has you the whole time. Now it is your choice to decide to trust him. That is all about the worry-free life that Jesus taught us today. May God richly bless you all, everybody. Amen. Let, let's pray. Gracious Lord, in this world, broken, sinful world, we are facing a lot of giants in our lives, a lot of Goliath. We can imagine. Lord, you gave us the lesson that never will be changed forever. That is, you are in me. I am in you. You trust my hope. You will never die. You will live with me forever. 
don't worry, because I am with you. Don't worry, you are not alone. You are with me, I am with you. We are in loving relationship now and forever. We love this Jesus. We love you, God. Jesus' name we pray. Amen.